Welcome to America's Heroes Group. And welcome back to America's Heroes Group. This time with our roundtable, our partner, the National Nurses United. Today is Saturday, May 21st, 2022. May is Mental Health Awareness and Military Caregiver Month. Our host is Cliff Kelly. I'm Sean Claiborne, the co-host. Our executive producer is Glenda Smith, and our digital media producer is Ivan Ortega of Scouts Honor Productions. And right now we have a partner on the line, Ms. Adelina Marshall. She's a VA mental health nurse. And also we're going to talk about a very controversial topic. I don't think something has been in the media a lot lately. People, A lot of people are concerned and talking about it, both on the right and on the left. We're talking about female veterans' access to reproductive health care if rural versus way is overturned. Ms. Ms. Marshall, can you hear us? Yes. I'm here, and thank you for the invite for this program today and for inviting me on this very, uh, to speak on this very important subject. So what can you tell us about um, reproductive health care? We're going to talk a lot. We're going to go in a lot of detail on a lot of different things because we like to cover all areas of any controversial issue, particularly something as controversial as this, and ask the questions that may be difficult to answer. Um, I'm not saying we can solve the problem in 30 minutes. But we want to get do a deep dive into this and understand what this really means from it from a non political uh, view, as much as that's possible, an unbiased un- non political view. So, what can you tell us about, um, particularly veterans' access to reproductive health care, and then how this ties yes. into the case of Roe versus Wade? Yes, reproductive health care uh, really impacts all of us, and that's giving the right of women. Um, the right to choose what they want to use for health care and how they do it, how they manage their own reproductive um, choices and challenges in life. And this also includes males and um, transgenders and others who may be looking at alternate ways to start their families. So we do know many um, people um, do in vitro fertilization and, you know, eggs that are left over that's been uh, fertilized at um, how is that going to be managed. And then many of our um, veterans, so a veteran is someone who has been um, discharged from the military and starting their private lives outside of military, the choices that will be available to them as uh, in the military does not fund um, a lot of reproductive uh, rights of their um, of the military personnel, and they therefore they would have to go out to private sector to um, manage their reproductive uh, choices and desires. Once they become a veteran, they can seek help at the VA, and at this point. I'm not sure how the VA, nor can I find anything on how the VA is going to be able to support our female vets and other vets who have uh, reproductive challenges. So as they're making these or trying to overturn um, Wade versus Roe, it goes well beyond um, someone who may need an abortion. An abortion is really a time-sensitive medical necessity um, people have um, people don't understand that a miscarriage is called an abortion too. So it, a lot of this is time sensitive, and if these areas, offices, clinics are not a, available to women, then this can very well put their life uh, on the line. They can have a topic pregnancy. There's um, many things outside of losing a child that women seek uh, reproductive advice and support. And even birth control is at risk now under this, if this is overturned. So how, so how, can you, how do you draw the connection, though? So Roe versus Wade, for, to most people, see Roe versus Wade as the law that legalized abortion. So if we're talking about, um, say, transgender, transgender person to get, um, or who has, um, but then we can get into the actual, what Roe versus Wade actually means. We'll get into that a little bit. But for the average person on the street, they look at Roe versus Wade as a law that has to do with abortion. So how does that tie into, say, someone who's not getting an abortion, but say this is needs some, some gender reassignment or needs uh, um, whatever, something else, something different that's sensitive in those topics and areas that we do we that we normally think of and those taboo subjects of reproductive health? 
So how does Roe versus Wade right. so many, of the abortion um, um, language? Yeah, so many, um, say, transgenders um, may still want to have children. Um, many people get surrogates to, um, you know, carry a child for them. How will this uh, impact? the process and procedures that they have to go through to make this happen, um, receiving uh, even information and birth control and uh, abortion support through the mail. How, how is this going to impact the mail, which is a federal government entity? So a lot of the things that we're hearing about the general public doesn't understand how deep that this can affect the public and affect public health also is a big factor. Uh, we look at right now, one of our crises is getting, um, you know, having formula available uh, for baby's health. But this even goes further than that because now we're at a, a point that we can't even take care of the kids that we already have here with, you know, the issues with supply and demand. So um, in, the tw in uh, 2020, they even tried to attack this from the point that they wouldn't have enough PPEs to support women who were having miscarriages or abortions, which they had nothing to do with uh, COVID and the supply of PPEs. So a lot of the information that out there is not correct. The public needs to stop and think how far reaching this is and um, how it will impact them for generations. Okay. So let's dig in a little bit and get into, like, get into the actual um, metrics and the actual uh, dialogue of what the Roe versus Wade, act, the law itself actually means. So Roe versus Wade, going back to 1972, people don't, the average person doesn't realize that the Roe versus Wade was really, the way Roe versus, Roe versus Wade started was because when, they, when uh, the woman who was pregnant who went under the pseudonym Roe, they went under a right to privacy argument. So in 1972, in the 72 decision, the Supreme Court ruled that restrictive abortion laws in Texas violated Roe's constitutional right to privacy, namely the right to make decisions about her own body. So the justices did acknowledge, however, the justice did acknowledge that there was a balance to strike between a woman's unmitigated right to privacy and the state's potential interest in the child's life, which brings back up that uh, whole idea of you know, right to life, a child is a child, uh, uh, when is a child a human being versus when are they, when are they an embryo or, or a collection of cells? So which led to the Roe versus Wade structure, which we'll get into that a little bit later, how they structured the law and what is at stake of being overturned uh, specifically. So once again, what we're talking about is so it goes into privacy, but I still don't understand, I still don't quite see the link between, say, for example, a person that goes in and, you know, wants to get gender reassignment, how that ties into um, abortion rights, or which is what Roe versus Wade it, and it basically is talking about. But when you un, when you strike Roe versus Wade, you still have HIPAA law, you still have, you still have privacy in that regard. Right. Um, they've even gone so far as to say that uh, if someone even knows that you are seeking uh, care, you might have to seek care and um, for an incomplete miscarriage, which in some states they're looking at that as a violation. That would be a violation and subject the woman to, um, you know, to criminalize the woman for seeking care for that. And then a lot of them are not going to be able to get contraceptive information following uh, the loss of a pregnancy. So, your privacy is being impinged by you're not allowed to make your own decisions. You're, you know, you, you can have someone's girlfriend who um, knows that you're pregnant. You may have lost a baby or uh, decide not to have it, and they report you. And it's not so simple as, look, I didn't do anything wrong. Now you've got to uh, pay for legal assistance and lose time from work. And then this is mental health month. There is a lot of women impacted. Their mental health is impacted by a pregnancy or a rape that they may end up becoming pregnant, which some of these laws would not even allow them to uh, not carry uh, that pregnancy to full term. Or you've been traumatized. And if you've lost that pregnancy, how do you go and get the care you need for, um, 
you know, for aftercare for a situation like this. So it's very, very far reaching. And, and you know, that's, privacy that's, that's is one of the big problems. It's far reaching. And I still can't make the connection between, I get privacy. That's what it really was all about. It's really about right to privacy. But the thing of it is, is that how do you connect a person who say, you know, like the things you just mentioned, a person who wants to carry a, a child to term, um, now, not, notwithstanding what's going on in Texas, because Texas is some weirdness going on down there with Texas because uh, the idea of someone reporting you because they see you were pregnant on Tuesday, but then on a few months later there's no child. Now they want to dig into your business and find out, you know, what happened to that child, what happened to that baby, and report you. That sounds weird. But this isn't just <laughs> Texas. It's Alaska, Arkansas. Right. Um, but, the, but the main law we're talking about. Missouri, main law. Yeah. Indiana, and even Ohio. Mm hmm I mean, even border states of 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 this of Illinois are going to be following through if this situation, this law is overturned. But, but once again, how do we connect that with other areas or aspects of reproductive health besides it, besides the abortion question? That's the part that, I, that I'm still lost on. Well, you're not going to be able to. Um, some states don't even want you to be able to get contraceptions through the mail. There's plenty of advertisement on TV that you can just call and they'll send you um, birth control uh, pills or whatever through the mail. They they want to intercept that. So here's the privacy that's violated. You can't get these packages delivered to your home. Uh, you go to pick up that package. Perhaps the police could be standing there to arrest you. Um many reasons why this is interfering in your privacy versus even your health care, your own personal health care. If I have something wrong with me, I have a right to go to whatever doctor I want to and talk to my doctor, and we decide on what uh, treatment plan that I want to engage in. That's not anybody's business. And literally, my husband can also be um, cut out of that information if I want to. I don't have to involve my husband in this. Mm-hmm. So true. these are a lot of rights that are, have been standard to, to American population for many, many years. Mm-hmm. And now they want to literally violate the privacy that you have in your own home, telling you what you can and cannot do. And, and there are so many more reasons I, I, I like to use reproductive health versus abortion because people tend to think of abortion as a voluntary in a pregnancy. But this goes so much further than that. Okay. So the, this is a, this, this, I think it's a good idea now to look at the actual law that's actually on the books right now. What does Roe versus Wade actually say? So the way that Roe versus Wade is structured, and I got this information from AP Government Review, required Supreme Court cases from Heimler's history and also from the um, uh, from um, information from what's out there just in the actual uh, com- uh, the actual law, the actual law books from um, from Congress. So what states could can do and cannot do in limiting abortion? So the way they structure because it's a very difficult thing for them to understand, I think, because they're talking about something that's, that's a ph- philosophical question. You're talking about something that is a health issue. You're talking about something that is – um, it could be a religious issue to some people. It's a personal rights issue. It's a privacy issue. It, it impacts and it, touch, it touches everything that we do. And it's really no easy way, no uneasy, ugly way to really fix this or kind of solve this problem. I mean, the idea of, a, of someone um, who's pregnant, I'm a man, so I can't relate to that level. But someone who's pregnant who has this thing that's going to change their body, who is, might be scared to death, especially if they're not prepared for or the circumstances that, that, that might have where that might have come from, whether it be a rape or some kind of incest situation or, uh, you know, anything that, could, that might a person who's unprepared to have a child might have to go through this process. The courts under, seemed to understand this back in 1972, and then they agreed with Roe, in fact, that this was, that she did have a right to make decisions about her own body and also the fact that she had to have the right to, to her own <laughs> privacy. So they created three their three uh, limits or three tests to whether or not a state can limit or restrict abortion. So this goes back to states' rights. First trimester, the court said, states cannot in any way restrict abortion in the first trimester, period. States in the first trimester cannot restrict any abortion in any way. Second trimester, states could make some restrictions as long as they were related to the mother's health. That's second trimester. So states have the ability to limit or restrict abortions in the second trimester as long as it's related to the mother's health. In the third trimester, states could prohibit abortions entirely 
unless the mother's health and life were at stake. So in a third trimester, abortions are t- basically off limits unless the mother's life is at stake. So that, to most Americans, I think, to, um, go back and clarify, you said planned or unplanned um, pregnancies or planned pregnancies. Sometimes planned pregnancies also do not work out. There can be harm to the fetus. The mother could end up starting to have a miscarriage and need to get care, and that care needs to be available to them, and that is their own private decisions on what they make. So as you're trying to say, is is a violation of privacy. It's a grave violation of privacy. And it's an even bigger impact on women's privacy. This, this is not a man's thing. This is a woman. This is her body. And it's impacting on the woman's right to privacy and to make these decisions. So then how do we, how do we negotiate then? Because um, it seems like the court – Took both sides of the of the of the question. They looked at the right to privacy, but then they, like as as, they, as we mentioned earlier, they still had a potential interest in a child's life. But what is a child? What is when is when does actual life begin? So a lot of people believe that abortion is murder. That you're actually killing a, a living human being when you have an abortion. Which is why, because um, when you because the first trimester is um, abortions cannot be restricted in the first trimester, but then it, the restrictions start coming in after that first trimester because that baby is starting to develop in the womb. After seven weeks, correct me if I'm wrong. But after seven weeks, the, the brain starts to develop. So we have to. Is so this my healthcare or, is essential to be had earlier in the the woman's. Um, pregnancy, even for survival or non-survival of that child, again, that belongs to the woman, her doctor, and her God. I mean, I don't think there's too too many women in a late uh, term uh, childbearing that will choose to have an abortion, and most places will not do one in that fourth trimester, even third trimester. Those are tends to be um, a natural um uh, abortions that will happen, miscarriages when people lose children um, during that period of time. So the health care is very essential, and women it's essential that women um, get treated early and know what is, is going on. We have a lot of very young women. Uh, there are women who never even had their first menstrual cycle that ends up becoming pregnant. Okay? So there's many ways they can get pregnant. And they need to have access to care. And this will deny them that access or scare off many of them to even um, know that they're pregnant early in case they do decide that they did not want to carry this child to full term. Hmm. But going back to that question again, so what do you say to people that say that um, that abortion is murder? So I don't I'm, I'm not God and I don't make that decision. That decision that, belongs. But that's what my question is. It's not to me. It's not a religious question or a question about you know what God you believe in. If I go down the street and shoot somebody, that's murder. I mean, that's not. I can't say, oh, well, you know, that's, uh, my God said I could go blow that person up. I mean, I mean, but if, so, so, but what does science say about when does life begin? Because I think that for a lot of people, the average, average person on the street, because the news media, I think, makes it seem like the, that the, the country is so 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 polarized because all these show is the fringes of the argument. They show the people that want to blow up abortion clinics, and you show the people who are just out there, you know, you know, this, you know, on the other extreme. But I think most Americans, from most of my conversations and reading in this, from my own personal view, you know, nobody likes to, wants to see a ba- person have to go go through an abortion. But at the same time, nobody really knows when does life begin. We're taught in, in science books, and we're taught. So in, there are some arguments that life begins when that uh, fetus is able to to survive. So many times that's in latent stage of the development of that fetus. But I'm not here to make that determination on what is viable and what is not. We've probably lost more of our children in the last few months in Chicago than uh, uh, any probably amount of abortions that they've had because abortions, um, choosing not to have a child, that has been decreasing. It hasn't been increasing. Right. And we have more children that are murdered and murdering people in these streets recently than, than that. So there is a whole lot of social issues that we cannot resolve 
um, in a half an hour, probably in a lifetime. Right. <laughs> I'm here to support women's rights to make a decision about their own body and about uh, determining and uh, keeping their privacy and being supported and supporting them in their right to do so. Ms. Adelina Marshall, VA mental health nurse, we appreciate your time and also the information that you brought to us. And like I said, we will have to revisit this probably several times, really get down to the kind of scratch the surface of this, of this topic. And I think we're probably one of the best outfits to do that because we tr- we're not trying to be political. We're not trying to, you know, get philosophical, just trying to get down to the facts and what we know, particularly from a science perspective and also what from and also a personal human rights perspective. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Well, this your, is your, your one of the best radio shows to offer that. Every time I tune in to WBON, I get a lot of um, information that supports me and my family. And I would encourage your listeners to tune in and then to make their own decisions. Adelina Marshall, thanks for your time. This is America's Heroes Group. We'll be right back.